Hello and welcome to Gathered Makes. In this tutorial today, we're going to show you how to make a quilt sandwich. You will need a piece of fabric for your quilt top, a piece of backing fabric for the back of your quilt, and a piece of wadding to go in the middle of your quilt sandwich. Press your quilt top and backing fabric with an iron. If you've made a patchwork quilt top like I have here, use your iron to press the seams flat. Use a small pair of scissors to trim away any loose threads from your quilt top. Now measure your quilt top and cut a piece of backing fabric so that it is 3 or 4 inches larger than the quilt top. Cut a piece of wadding or batting to be the same size as your quilt backing. Before you begin making your quilt sandwich, smooth out the wadding with your hands. It can also help to leave your wadding to hang somewhere in your house for a day or two. This will let any creases fall away. You can either use one piece of wadding, or if you have two pieces that are too small for your full quilt, you can join them together before you make your sandwich. To do this, simply place the two pieces next to each other, overlapping slightly, and sew them together using a herringbone stitch. This is basically zigzags of loose stitches. Now you have your three layers, you are ready to sew them together. This is called basting your quilt sandwich. Securing your three layers firmly throughout is really important for the next stage of quilting them together. The more evenly you secure them now, the less your fabric layers will shift around under your sewing machine needle when you come to quilt them. In this tutorial, we are going to show you two ways to baste your sandwich. Spray basting with a spray adhesive or basting the sandwich with safety pins. You can get special quilting safety pins which are curved to help you work them through the layers more easily, but I'm just using regular ones here. Start by laying your backing fabric right size down on a large flat hard surface and smooth it out with your hands. Use masking tape to secure the edges of the backing to your surface. Now spray the backing fabric with spray adhesive and smooth your wadding out onto it. If you are making a large quilt, roll your wadding and place it along the top edge of your backing fabric. Spray a line of basting spray along the top section of your backing fabric and then unroll a section of wadding onto it. Smooth out this piece of wadding and then repeat until you have unrolled the whole piece of wadding. Now spray the wadding layer and press your quilt top onto it. With large quilts, again it can help for you to roll your quilt top as you did with the wadding, so you can smooth out each section as you stick it in place. I'm just making a mini quilt here, so I'm just going to lay my fabric on top and smooth it out with my hands. If you opt to baste your quilt with safety pins, you can use pins to secure your three layers together. First spread out your backing fabric, wadding and quilt top, as we did in the last stage but without the glue. Start in the centre and secure the three layers with a safety pin and then work your way out towards the edges of the quilt, gradually adding more safety pins.
Space your lines of pins about 4 inches or 10 centimeters apart to form a grid of safety pins. Once you've covered the whole quilt with these, you have finished your basted quilt sandwich. Your layers are securely basted and ready to sew. To finish your quilt, you'll need to sew the three layers together with a sewing machine. Take care to choose a thread colour that will match both the top and underneath of the quilt. I'm using straight lines of quilting for this mini quilt, so I'll be using a regular sewing machine with a walking foot. Gradually feed the quilt through the sewing machine and remove the safety pins as you go if you're using the safety pin method. Once you've quilted your three layers together, trim the edges of your quilt using a rotary cutter and cutting mat. This is called squaring up. Finally, bind the edges of your quilt with fabric strips of double fold binding. For a full guide on how to do this, see our video on how to bind a quilt for beginners. Once you've finished quilting and binding, your quilt sandwich is now a fully fledged quilt project. Congratulations! For more tutorials like this one, head to our website gathered.how.